pedal people no dizzles that like the boards. I've just filmed the official uh, official product demos for the new Friedman boards, which are wait in some camera right here. Leslie cuts to the back camera or the side camera or one of the cameras that can see that right there. Um, and uh, now back to me. And uh, you know, I couldn't say fuck or shit or damn it. I couldn't bitch about anything because it's, of course it's a you know corporate video. And um, I'm wearing this. I I I don't like. What are these called? Collared shirts. So, um, love the guys from Boutique Amp Distribution. I did this every single time. Uh, but you know what? Now we're here. We're on my channel. So, we drink coffee. The dogs were coming in and we had to cut and cut. You know, none of this goes. Now we're back here. And fuck that shit. We're taking this off. And now we're gonna see. You, you didn't see anything? Now we're going to see if we can find something to bitch about. And we drink coffee that's hidden under a little lid. So, let's take a good hard look at the whole system that Friedman offers. These boards are most certainly boutique boards. There's loads of boards out there, boards with rails, all this. There's um, some higher-end boards. There's Schmidtery, which I love, but they're very expensive, but very good. Um, these definitely clock in at a higher price range. On the other hand, those of us who don't just have inexpensive pedals on their boards want to A, protect them, and B, have a good system to make it all work, and most certainly have it all sound good, which Friedman really helps with when we get to the buffer bay. Um, so... Let's look at the boards. There's the 1520, the 1525, and the 1530, which is inches, and I have the measurements in centimeters somewhere. So here's the 1520. Let's start by saying that these bags are just insanely cool. They are soft bags, but not like the pedal train soft bags where that are, you know, just a kind of a bag, <laughs> kind of like a shopping bag. But it, it's good, but it's not hard. It's really, Leslie, I'm saying it's not hard. And then you, not even then, I get it. That's what she said. Thank you, baby. I'm going to chuck that up to you not knowing where the button was. Okay. Because that was, that was a good, that's what she said. <laughs> I love you too. Okay. So these are hard soft bags, soft hard bags. So hard bags. I don't know. So hard. That's what they should be called. Um, they are very sturdy. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put them on a plane. Uh, I wouldn't check them. But let's check them. Let's see what I did there. So each of them comes with a very solid, nicely padded strap. And you can put cables and whatever you want in here. There's more than enough space in these, which I like. Some. Pedalboard cases, the pedalboard sits in there very snug. If you have any pedal sticking out over the, the edge, it's a no-go. In here, well, let's look. See this? There's definitely room to move quite a bit. So very, very nice. It comes with a goodie bag and I have prepared a little film so you can see the goodie bag and see what's in the goodie bag. There's uh, stuff from 3M in there, which uh, holds your zip ties, which is great. There are zip ties in there. Uh, having the zip tie uh, fasteners as part of the package is great, because I usually have to go to the hardware store and get them. Um, there's Velcro in here, and there's also Dual Lock, which is to uh, attach other brands' power supplies, because they're heavier and they're at the bottom. So Dual Lock, they thought of everything. So here's the 15... 20, 15 by 20 inches. It is a two tier, two level board. The lower one is flat, the upper one is angled. And you get this riser here for your wah and um, volume pedal. If you need more of these, you can put four of them right here. They're really not expensive. You can get more, it's not gonna break the bank. Um, 
or take it off. Four screws in the back, just detach it and you have, you know, more space here. Now, all these holes for cables are really enough to make cable management easy. What I love about this, all the space right here. That is absolutely killer because you can stuff all your cables in here. It's not like they're gonna even like, you know, uh, scratch on the floor or anything. This is a huge, huge hole to put all your cables in. Nope, nothing, good then. Um, I love these rubber feet because they're super, super soft which means once this thing hits the floor, it's staying there. You cannot push it. I've demonstrated that in the unboxing. I will demonstrate it again right now. Oops. Definitely great feet that they have on there and even if you're tank rolling over this thing, look at this. They have little, let's call them bridges right here. So this foot is not just on the aluminum lip right here. This is actually, they worked in little, little bridges. It is definitely very, very solid. These are light, but super stable and just great boards. So let's look at more. This is the 1525. It's just longer. Mm. and has one riser, but you can put the uh, power supply, the Friedman power supply, in two, po no, no, in two positions, okay, if you wanted that. Um, of course, not big enough. Nothing, baby? Oh, thank you. Same thing, same goodie bag on this would be my board, because you gotta put your pedal somewhere. Uh, comes with two risers. Again, you can buy more. Um, now the screws for the, the holes for the risers are only on the sides, which kind of makes sense. So two here, two here. If you really wanted to put one in the middle, drill four holes. It's no biggie. Um, that's also what she said. Um, you can take them off and the options, the, the, the possibilities for these boards are quite immense of what you can do with them. Now, if you had a flat surface, you probably can fit more pedals on a board because you can play the whole Tetris. The fact that um, you have a space down here, which, how do I say this? You have a space here, you put a pedal there, and then you only have this much left. Instead of space here, put a pedal there, put a pedal here. So you have to be more organized. On the other hand, this is a very neat system. I prepared a little clip and I'm just going to roll that while I'm talking where you see a lot of options of what you can do with these boards. Um, I didn't wire up the pedals just to show you what you can do and how you can fit the pedals on there. I made sure that all the pedals were spaced so that the uh, plugs, if you had flat plugs like the flat cables from Rockboard or um, George L or Lava or Evidence Audio um, could fit all there. So this is a realistic setup for these boards and what you can do with them. Definitely a lot of stuff and a lot of possibilities in a lightweight board with a great case. Again, these will not be in the price range of uh, Pedal Train, but they are something different. And I think the details on them is really where it comes in. Pedal Train is great. Rockboard is great. Rockboard's actually working on a patch bay kind of system. So, I'm thinking the new Rockboard board will be somewhere between these and Pedal Train in terms of ingenuity. Pedal Train is a flat surface and it's great. It's served as well for years. This is, I think, the evolution of where it's going. So, there are four screws right here. Okay? And, and that camera, we can't see anything. Let's see, let me make that camera lighter. That makes a lot more sense now. We should have done that earlier. So, the four screws right here. Um, are for the buffer bay. So uh, you can buy each of these boards with the goodie bag and the so hard bag and the board. That is option number one. Option number two is the gold package, which is including the buffer bay, which of course you can buy by itself. If you buy it in the gold package with the board, uh, you save quite a few bucks. I think it's around 50 bucks that you can save, but don't nail me down on this. 
Now, what this does, I'll show you in a second, but the thing is, it has two screws on top, which will sit into the first two screws right here. Okay? And then it sits right there. Absolutely beautiful. And it's your patch bay where you can plug in all your cables and they're not hanging from different sides of your board. They're all in one convenient location. Now, if you want your cables to be, to be protected even more, you put it into the other two screws and then it sits recessed like this. And then your cables are very safe. They can't be, you know, kicked off, broken off, whatever. This is definitely smart thinking. And it shows that Dave Friedman has spent years building board after board after board after board. Probably be getting bored. Oh, okay. See what I did there? With the, with the word board? It's pretty clever. Pretty clever. No, it's pretty clever. So let's look at a couple of routing options that are possible with the Friedman Buffer Base 6. Here we see a pre, post and foot switch configuration. Let me explain what that means. It means um, you have some pedals in front of the amp and some pedals in the effects loop, which of course with a, uh, several, uh, an amp that has several channels is normal. And you also want to switch that amp with a foot switch. Well, all these would be individual cables running to the amp. And they are still individual cables, but they're all coming out from one central location. So the wiring would be with your guitar, you would go into the buffered in, which is of course a great benefit of a clean signal. And uh, on the other side, uh, on the inside of the pedal board, that is going then into your pre-path, which would be overdrives, EQs, phaser, flanger, maybe um, uh, compression. And that now, of course, has to be sent back to the amp. So we're going into through one. And on the other side, the through one is going into the input of your amp with a longer cable. Now you take the send into through two. And that is then going on the board through your effects, chorus, delay, reverbs, usually time-based effects. And that is then going into through three, back into the return of the amp. And obviously the big benefit is that you have one central location where all the cables are going to the amp, but there's more. The foot switch can also be wired this way. So the foot switch that's on the board is going into through four and you take a TIS cable because it's a uh, dual foot switch. Um, also together with your other audio cables into the amp. So that is hyper convenient. Everything is in one location, plugged in, labeled, going to your amp in high quality. But there's more that you can do. Let's check this out. Here we have a completely different setup. That setup is you have a rack system, preamp, power amp, maybe effects, and everything is MIDI controlled. So on your rather simple board, you have a MIDI switcher, a volume, and a wah. So your guitar still has to go into the board in front of you. So you use the Friedman buffer bay, first of all, to get a buffered signal. So your signal is always nice and crisp. And that buffered signal is running into the wah and the volume and then out of through one into the input of your rack system. That whole rack system is controlled with a MIDI switcher, which is being plugged into the MIDI uh, output on the buffer bay. Now, for some guitar players, stereo is an issue. So you can easily do this with the Friedman Buffer Bay. You have all the pedals in front in this case. So go into the buffered in, buffered out through your pedals, and the last pedals will turn your signal into stereo. Now you're going into two different outputs. Uh, you could even do this with a uh, Y cable, but you don't have to, we have enough outputs. So through one, through two are going to two different amps. But you could do more than just stereo. You could do stereo plus an extra amp for your acoustic, which is also wired into the board. So yes, we have enough ins and outs to actually have an acoustic guitar running through the buffer bay into some special acoustic boxes on your same board and then running out of an extra output um, on the buffer bay to an acoustic amp. And it could all be located on the same board, all the cables in the central location. Isn't that neat? It makes life easier, it makes the board cleaner, it makes setup faster, and it sounds better with it. Well, why? Well, because it has a buffer, and it has a Friedman buffer. Well, what does Dave Friedman know about pedal boards? Well, he's built a couple of thousands for some of the, you know, most illustrious musicians out there. He knows what he's talking about, and he's encountered every problem throughout the years. So he's designed this thing to eliminate a lot of the problems. One of the problems is, running a lot of cable. Now, a lot of cable going to the board and then on the board. See each pedal 
as a tiny cable because the signal runs through it, even if it's through bypass. And then a tiny cable running to the next and a tiny cable running to the next. What you have is a very not so great long cable on the board that is sucking your tone. You might not know how much it's sucking your tone because you don't have an AB comparison. So let's do this AB comparison. What I've done here is I've put 17 true bypass pedals on uh, the big Friedman board, the 1530. And they don't have power, they're just off. So we, we built a very, very big cable. And I'm going to play you this board just dry through the guitar with and without the buffer and you will see what the buffer will do. Now, do you want the buffer now or not? This thing gets you the sound of the cable directly into the amp, the most pristine signal you can possibly get, but it gets you that signal with all of your cables and all of your pedals in the signal chain. That is absolutely amazing. Now, you can, of course, put this on a normal board. Um, I would put it in the corner somewhere. It is designed so that a normal pedal can sit on top of it as so it's a little riser so you're not losing pedal board space if you have a standard pedal train or any other brand it will work it will work better if you're using it with the Friedman board better because it's hidden so and then of course they have the power grid 10 first of all cool word power grid now this is not a power supply with a toroidal transformer or any other kind of transformer. I, I sound like I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I do not. It doesn't have a transformer in it. It is a switching mode power supply. Do not know what that means, but it means it's light as fuck. Could not say that in the other demos. Um, it's light and it has zero interference. We're going to do a test on that later. I'm just going to copy in the test I did for the other videos because I'm not an idiot doing it again. Now, two screws. Included with the power supply, also comes with, obviously, a whole bunch of cables um, and the screws and all that. So you go, smack that in there, and then your plug is right there. The color matches the logo, and underneath you have access to... Wait, where, where do you see that? There you see that. No, you don't see that. There, you have access to... Uh, the plugs and still a lot of space under the board for your cables and all that stuff. So this definitely doesn't, uh, you know, hit the floor. Let the power supply hit the floor. Let the power supply hit the floor. Let the... Okay. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think this is pretty damn cool and it really hurts me that I have to send these back. It's really, I mean, I have, I actually have a whole room of pedal boards. I'm not shitting you, I have a little room back there. Used to be a pantry. When you open that, it is all pedal boards. <laughs> I don't know how many. Um, I like this. This is nice. You get this in the gold package with the boards. I mentioned that. Now in the platinum package, you also get this. Also, I think about 50 bucks cheaper. Don't name me down on this, roughly. So you can save about 100 bucks if you buy it all together. Um, this has 10 outs, as I said, it's a switching mode power supply, it's not toroidal. Um, it has 10 outputs at 350 milliamps each. That's quite a shitload. Should be enough to power pretty much any pedal you have, even the big Strymons, um, almost everything you can throw at it, it can do. Now, it can't do 12 volts. Because, you know what, 1% of the pedals might need 12. Some pedals want 18, it can do that with the cable that's included, it just uses up two outputs and that's it, and then we have 18. The um, chocks, for example, do the same thing. Um, they also don't have 18 volt outputs, you just use a little cable. Um, it comes with a phono cable, it comes with um, polarity reverse cables, why did I say re reverse? Re, re reverse. I'm stuttering. Why am I stuttering? 
it's freaking light and it matches, it, it goes under these boards. Now the question is, what if we don't use Friedman-y stuff? Actually, no. First, let's see if it's true what they're saying, that there's no interference. Here's my little interference test from the official demo that I did. Um, and this is actually the test that I did. And it's, it's absolutely amazing. Let's, let's go in there. Let's see the setup and what I did. We're wearing the stupid shirt again. So here's my test setup. I used the 1520 from Friedman and loaded it up with a whole bunch of pedals, which is, well, eight of them actually. And they're all on. You can see they're connected to the Friedman power grid. And I, they're all on. They're not connected with audio, just all on drawing power, meaning this thing is working its little butt off right now. Um, and I have another pedal right here, which is um, connected to a guitar and to an amp. Yes, this is live. So it's also drawing power from the power grid. And right now the pedal's not on. Well, duh, I hear nothing. Now the pedal is on and it should get interference if there's interference from the power supply. Nothing. Now let's go crazy, crank up the level, crank up the drive. Now you can clearly see that putting a pedal directly on the power grid is not going to be any problem. Now, careful, we're going to do the crazy test. We're going to put a wah on it. Now, a wah has a coil in it, and there's a thin plate at the bottom, and um, it's a cheap wah, so I expect something is going to interfere. Rinse. So we're going to turn this on, clearly on, right there, and... So yes, with the wah, there is a tiny bit of interference going on. It is very subtle. If this power supply was below your board and there was still the aluminum in between it, would not be a problem at all. You would never put this directly on it anyway. Pedals, not an issue at all. We, we could see this with the wah. You know, keep it this far away and you're good. Still very impressive. I've had other power supplies that made a big, big ruckus when you put the wah on it. Trust me. Yeah, pretty impressive. No other power supply was that quiet. Absolutely amazing. Now the question is, what if I'm not combining Friedman products? What if I have this board and I want to put a chocolate under it? Well, it comes with a dual lock, so you can dual lock it under. And with this huge space, easy. I mean, putting a chocolate under any board is a pain in the ass. This, I don't even need those brackets. The dual lock should hold it in place and I still have a lot of space left. So, not a problem. Big ass Phoenix from Walrus Audio, smack, done. So yes, works like a charm. So that works. Now what if I don't have the holes for the, uh, for the buffer bay? Well obviously I've prepared a little video but I can show you here as well. You just smack that on there, velcro it, you can even velcro a pedal. Oh thank you, let's see. You can even velcro a pedal right on top of it, and then you just use it as a riser and you're not even losing space. So that works beautifully, why not? And then all your cables are nicely here, you have the buffer, and again, you put a ped pedal right on top of it, you haven't lost any space. So that works, you don't have to have it under the board, which in this case, mm, I don't necessarily recommend doing unless you do this, right? Hmm, no, that wouldn't work. I would put that on the board. Now, with this, we now know that you can actually put this on top of a pedal board like this. And again, use it as a riser and put pedals. And I put a Strymon pedal on top of it and then you can still access the, uh, the foot switches easily. Um, it does fit underneath. You can somehow, I don't quite know how, you would do that, secure it under here and it does right here, not sit on the on the ground. It is very, very it's a very tight fit. If you do this, okay, um, you can see that it, it, there is no clearance. It's kind of flush with the feet. You might want to put bigger feet on it on these pedal train boards, which is something I told pedal train that for 90% of the power supplies, these feet are not high enough. If they just made them twice as high, it would be fine. So that's 
they just need higher feet. But it does work with a standard Novo. This is a Novo 24. Yes, there's a Novo 24, but it works with the Novo series. Not a problem. I just don't know how to actually secure it underneath. Um, there are four screws here. I cannot tell you, uh, screw holes, they're, they're threads. I cannot tell you what they are for, because I do not know. Oh, big, big, big thing. <laughs> like Juan Alderete de la Peña and Nick Reinhardt were uh, with Warwick at the uh, music messer and they were playing these huge Earthquaker devices boards, which had power supplies under them. Well, you know what? American power supplies. So they needed these really, really thick uh, transformers to go to 110 from the 240. And a lot of bands have that problem. They're coming to Europe with their pedal boards and they need transformers. Or European bands go to the US. Not with this. 110, no, actually 100 to 240, 50 or 60 hertz. It doesn't give a flying rat's ass. This makes it a lot easier to fly for bands. So this is a big plus. It also is not super heavy. Um, it has 10 350 milliamp outputs and doesn't give you interference. What else do you want to know? I know a power supply is not sexy. It's boring as fuck. Okay, it doesn't make a sound. You spend a lot of money on it and it comes and you're like, yeah, let's listen. Uh, it's not a delay. It's not an overdrive. It's not a guitar. It's, just, it's, it's a tool. It, you need it and you need a good one. And this is a good one. <laughs> Bottom line, my two cents about the Friedman boards. They always point out, all made in the US, all made in the US. Well, you know, for, for Americans, that is, of course, they like made in the US and support the, and that's, that's all good, and that's patriotic, and that's all good. I couldn't give less of a flying rat's ass. Um, this could be made in China, as long as it's made well, which the Chinese can do. You know, just have to check on it. Um, I, I don't care. It can be made in China. Could be made in Germany. We don't make shit here, people, okay? Made in the US is not a higher grade label than made in Germany. I'm sorry, it's not. Made in Denmark? Why not? Made in Lithuania? Who says Lithuanians can build shit? So, yes, um, selling in the US, the whole made in the US is a big selling point. To us here in Europe, do we care? No, we want a good product. This is a good product, okay? No matter where it's built. So I love these things. I love the case, which is from Access. I love the ingenuity. I love that they went a different direction. I love that it's a two-tier thing, even though you might waste some space, but it's, a, it, it's just a different feel for the board, and I like it. I love how much this can bring back the sound of going straight into the amp. This is definitely a big, big plus. Um, and that it just sits in your board, not there, over here. It just sits in your board and you forget about it up to the point where you want to plug shit in. And then it's easier. So this is very, very nice. And of course, having a power supply that gives you room to grow. You might not need all 10 outputs of the Power Grid 10, but you might need seven. And then you daisy chain a bit. And then you want to buy the next big pedal, you know that you have the resources. And sometimes buying the next pedal is prohibitive because it means, oh my God, I have to eBay my power supply and buy a new power supply. So why not just buy the big ass fucking thing right away and then never worry. So yeah, when you buy the platinum package with everything in it, it might be shocking at first, on the other hand, you need a power supply anyway. You need a buffer anyway. You might want a patch bay because it's cool and you can buy patch bay separately for money. Um, and this type of board is hard to get when it's not a Friedman board. Um, cases, it's, it's all good. The whole system is very well thought through, very well built, made in the US. Um, and it says Friedman on it, which is just damn sexy. They know what they're doing. That's all I can say. And um, thanks for watching. I'm going to say links below if I can find them. These things are brand spanking new, so they might not have hit stores yet. I'll see what I can find. 
I want to thank the guys from Boutique Amp Distribution because they're cool. Um, they let me lick amps. If you haven't seen, watch my video from the uh, factory, the factory tour, Boutique Amp Distribution factory tour. Um, anyone who lets me roam free in their factory, lick an amp and tell me this uh, the next night, hey, that was cool, um, is okay in my book. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Avi. I'll see you guys later. And now some animals. Circles, but